up. This is Mike from Cars and Bikes. Today, we're going to look at the 2010 BMW S1000RR. This isn't really a fair review because this is my bike. So, I'm a little biased. But, let's take a quick look at this little baby I like to call Heidi. Do a quick walk around. Headlights in the front, BMW tags, my helmet, and such, whatnot. Let's take a quick look at the gear shifter. You can see some of the electronic bits here, which enable the quick shifter. So you can go full throttle and shift up to the next gear. Chain, a little dirty. Haven't been keeping up maintenance too much. The tires, you can see the evidence from my latest track day. Some extra rubber on the sides, which you pick up from the track from everybody else's sticky rubber. License plate, I'm sure you don't care too much about. And let's take a look at some things inside of Dash. Now, sitting on the bike, you can see the RPM gauge goes up to 16,000. Now, one thing that they don't really tell you is that bikes rev a heck of a lot higher. There's a mail van over there. Bikes rev a heck of a lot higher than any normal car. Even a Ferrari 458 is only going to rev to 9,000 RPM revolution per minute. This bike, 14,000. Some bikes, like the Hondas, will go up even higher, 14,500. Some even go up to 16,000. Now, when you turn the bike on, let's take a look. Now let's get some of that lovely startup sound. It's gonna start up revving around 1500. And this baby revs loud. Don't wanna piss off the neighbors too much, but this bike gets real loud and the exhaust is stock. Now the bike revs to 14,000 RPM. And another thing they don't really tell you is that this bike and lots of other bikes like it will go 90 miles an hour in first gear at 14,000 RPM. Now, when you're on the bike going 80 miles an hour, accelerating at full throttle, the bike is basically an animal. It's trying to wheelie, the wheel's starting to spin, you need all the electronics to help you out. Some people get really good at it and don't need it, I'm not actually a pro, only semi-pro. Let's take a look at some of the bits and bobs that I like. You can see my suspension settings here are at six. That means it's mostly soft. I have a separate set of settings that I like to use on the racetrack and crank it up to nine. But nine on the street means you feel every little bump and the streets of San Francisco aren't great. You can also adjust some of the other settings down here, and you can see my Gaffer Wave rotors. Just replaced them. Make sure they're nice and smooth when you're going down on the track, trying to decelerate from 125 miles an hour on the straights. Down to 20 miles an hour for a hairpin turn. And these brakes are smooth as glass. You get similar suspension adjustments on the rear, you might be able to see that in there. These again are set to soft for the street mode. Right now, I'm just geared up, run some errands here. Some things I don't like about this bike. I like pretty much everything, but it doesn't have all the latest features. So it doesn't have, for instance, heated grips. Not really needed on a sunny day like today in California, but it would be nice in some of the colder days. Some other things, the suspension is adjustable, but only the compression and dampening, and you have to use a screwdriver to do it. There's a new bike that has almost semi-active suspension where you can adjust it automatically with a touch of a button. So that means when you go from the rough streets of San Francisco to the smooth roads on the coast, you're just one button click away to tighten up that suspension and get much better handling, 
much sharper reaction in the turns. Otherwise, you gotta stop and get out a screwdriver and start tweaking the settings. Also, the new models have a down blipper. It sounds awesome. Kind of like I had on my old car. Maybe I'll show a photo of the car. The down blipper on the bike will let you go clutchless downshifts. So going into a turn, just click down, you can get the next gear, and the bike's not gonna get upset. It doesn't have the sound that I would expect that my old BMW car had, or some of the new auto blippers and some of the Porsches sound, but it still gets the job done and makes it a little bit easier on the racetrack. This is a little bit old school, but even that's a stretch. This bike has all the anti-lock brakes and the dynamic traction control. So these are some of the electronic nannies that people talk about not really liking. Although, I like them. It keeps me safe. Another thing that I don't like is what's going to flash on the screen right here. You can see service October 16 means it wants service. Also, there's a service light right on the dash. Now, I like to do my own service, change the oil, not that hard. There's a shop here in San Francisco that lets you do it yourself. I get some enjoyment out of doing that. I learn to work on the bike myself, but the result is I get this annoying error message every time I start it up, and now the bike continually complains that it needs service, uh, which really means you just need to take it into the BMW shop and pay them their standard hourly rate, which I don't know that I really like doing. Now, for every ride, I always like to play it safe. You can see today I've got my motorcycle jacket on, solid leather, some protection in the bits. Also, I always wear the helmet. You can see my gloves. You may notice I'm wearing jeans, but even these have little protectors in them. Remember, be safe. The car just started up in the garage behind me. Anybody guess what it is before it comes out? It's a classic sound mid-engine, four-cylinder, has a distinct sound. You gotta know it by now before you see it. What is that? There it is. Overall, I really like the bike. And until next time, this is Mike on Cars and Bikes.